I was a really sensitive kid. I was overwhelmed. I didn't feel safe in my environment. I didn't feel safe with my own thoughts. For a long time, I felt powerless. I had to take radical responsibility for the path that I wanted to create. When you give yourself permission to go inwards, when you give yourself permission to face off with unexpressed emotions and pain, you're making more room for all of the things that you truly want. Breathwork is a tool to access our subconscious mind so we can start to do the work. We can go back, we can revisit the past, we can bring up unexpressed emotions and memories that haven't been processed. We can process them, we can let them go so that past event no longer affects us in the same way. It's a lot of people, they don't have those tools, they don't have that knowledge, they don't feel okay, they feel broken, they're suffering, they're stuck, they're looping in cycles. But when we remember that we are creators, we can take conscious control of our physiology, we can move beyond that stress response we can step into calling forward what we want that's when we start to play the game baby yeah. that's when we start to really live and we're starting to co-create our own reality hello beautiful humans welcome back to the know thyself podcast where every single week we get the honor and privilege to sit down with a brilliant mind and open heart to help us know ourselves better each and every single day my guest Today is a dear friend. I am so looking forward to this conversation because he is an artist, a mentor, someone who co-founded uh, Awaken Breathwork. He travels all around the world supporting high performers, celebrities, uh, to really activate them and to help anybody who's struggling with trauma, suffering, a lot of us, um, to move through that, to alchemize the denser energies into light. And he's somebody that is so inspiring to see his own path, his own journey. And he's just real. He's like not trying to be anything he's not. And it's a breath of fresh air in a world of secondhand versions. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, thank you so much, Lucas Mack. Let's go. Let's go. We got our cacaos. We got our cacao, <laughs> sir. <laughs> and we're about to blast off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already busted. Let's go. Well, the first thing I want to say is thank you for having me here. And we were talking about it just before we started rolling is that this is your dharma. This is what you should be doing. So it's cool that you just invited me into the space. And for me, it's a privilege and honor to be here with you, like as a friend, and then also just to talk our talk. And I'm excited for this, where this conversation is going to go. And I guess my intention for this conversation is to all of you watching at home for you to feel empowered, for you to feel a sense of that you can do anything that you put your mind to. And really, you have the power within you to make your wildest dreams come true. So let this be a planting of seeds as well as a watering of seeds. And then it's up to you to go out there and take aligned action to make it real. So Beautiful, man. Yeah, I just love the intention of what we can dive into today and really be supportive for people on their path that mm -hmm. want to alchemize, heal what they've been going through, have an expanded level of inquiry and perspective of how we are actually creators, mm -hmm. how to har harness and utilize creator consciousness to mm -hmm. bring forth the vision that we want to in life and to make it a reality and to yeah. dream big because yeah. you're somebody for a hand that I've been able to see do that so well. What would somebody have to know um, about you and your life, your story, to see really how far you've come? Mm. Well, I guess if I take it back to when I was a kid, I was a really sensitive kid. I was overwhelmed. I was struggling with everything that I could sense and perceive in my environment. And first and foremost, I struggled with my relationship with myself because there was just a sense of feeling really overwhelmed. I was an empath, so I was picking up on everyone's emotions and thoughts and the things that weren't said um, around me. And I w wasn't able to tell the difference between what was mine and what was theirs. And I guess I really struggled with that. And one of the things I used to cope with that was food. I remember emotionally eating from a young age and I didn't know that's what I was doing, but it was a way for me to ground. It was a way to, for me to find comfort and safety because I guess I didn't feel safe. I guess I didn't feel safe in my environment. I didn't feel safe in my body. I didn't feel safe with my own thoughts and with all the energy that I could feel, um, both internally and externally. So food became a way that I could cope with that. And along that path, there was a big part of me that was self-destructing. And that was due to my own mindset, I guess, and the way I perceived myself. And for a long time, I felt like a victim. For a long time, I felt powerless. For a long time, I felt there was a big part of me that didn't want to be here on this planet. And I just struggled so much with a negative mindset and every day just telling myself really negative, horrible things. And for me, on that journey, 
I had to take radical responsibility for the path that I wanted to create because I knew that the path, the timeline that I was going down was a timeline of self-destruction that was leading me in a direction that my father took and I didn't want to end up like my father who took his life when I was a little kid and I had to change that direction and that took radical self-responsibility and that journey has not been easy and it's been a lot of inner work and a lot of changing habits and beliefs and working through trauma and unexpressed emotions and it's been messy, it's been cathartic and it's taken me to the depths of my own darkness and beyond that I've been able to shine light on all of it and that's what I support people with, you know, it's being able to really look at themselves and get honest around what's working and what's not working because from that place of, you know, having that realization of what's not working, then we can start to make change. Yeah, and we can only meet people to the depth in which we've gone ourselves, right? Yeah. And so the level of empathy that you garnered on the other side of so many difficult, challenging experiences, now mm. you be, now empathy becomes available for you. And yeah. not just empathy, but actually being able to support people and moving through it because you firsthand done it yourself. You mm. realize the power and capacity that you have to heal yourself. Mm. And when you feel that, it's just like the natural byproduct of light wants to give more light and you want to support other people and alchemizing stuff that they can move through because you've done it, you know it's possible. Mm. And it... I haven't found anything as fulfilling as supporting somebody alleviate their suffering in life. It's my favorite thing to do. It's so dope because once you realize that you are your own healer and you have a direct experience of that, that's something that you never forget. That's a transformational, life-changing moment. And you tap into so much inner power. And man, from there... You just know that anything that you go through in life, you have it. You've got it. It doesn't matter what it is. You just know that you can come out the other side and that you're going to be okay. And I guess a lot of people, they don't have those tools. They don't have that knowledge. They don't feel okay. They feel broken. They're suffering. They're stuck. They're looping in cycles of, you know, suffering. And they don't know how to move beyond that. So my favorite thing is to break those loops of suff cycles of suffering and to empower people to, you know, do the work. And it does take work. We're talking about real work that it takes to, you know, change those core beliefs and to move beyond that trauma and those unexpressed emotions and to come out the other side. But it's possible. Yeah. People that see individuals that seem to just be shining, whether it's on social media or in person, they don't realize the years or decades that they put into mm. into making that a reality. Both doing the internal trauma, you know, work and healing that stuff, but then also um, actively calling forth what they what they see on the other side mm. of um, on the other side of the coin. And so, just how important do you feel like it is once you start to go on this journey to see that you can actually take responsibility for your own awakening mm. and you can bring it forth. It's the key. I think radical responsibility in all areas of your life is when we step into being a creator. And many of us are just living in a state of survival, constantly overwhelmed and stressed. And we are affected so negatively by our environment and what's happening and other people. And when we stay in that survival stress response, then it's really hard to step into being a creator because our body's utilizing a lot of its own internal resources just to survive and cope with what we're feeling and going through. But when we remember that we are creators, we can take con we can take conscious control of our physiology. We can move beyond that stress response. We can step into calling forward what we want. And then we can take, you know, aligned action to make it real. That's when we start to play the game, baby. Yeah. That's when we start to really live, you know, and no longer are we just allowing our external, our external environment to dictate how we feel. We're actually starting to imprint on the environment on what's possible and we're starting to co-create, you know, our own realities. And that's amazing. Yeah. That shift from victim to creator consciousness Oftentimes, like we just we don't know what we don't know, mm -hmm. and so for individuals that are listening to this that feel like they're stuck or feel feels like they've been kind of in the similar groove for a while, and maybe they've been doing the healing work, but they haven't gotten to that you know next breakthrough level. Mm -hmm. There's belief systems, identities, things that we hold within us that we're not aware of that are really controlling, and they're kind of like the inner thermometer on our reality of what's comfortable and what we're going to keep attracting to us based off the vibration that we continue to emit. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that process for you, I know a big part of it has been the power of our breath because mm -hmm. through that we allow the unconscious to become conscious. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put my cacao down for this one because <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. Yeah. 
Okay, so the, the way I want to take it is, and I've spoken about this many times before, but let's go deeper on it. So when we're talking about healing our relationship to ourselves and healing our relationship to the past, and we're talking about breath work, breath work is a tool to access our subconscious mind. Breath work is a tool to access our emotional body. Breath work is a tool to move into an, a non-ordinary state of consciousness so we can start to do the work. And one element of that is stimulating the limbic system, which is the part of the brain that processes memory and emotion. And the limbic system is really interesting because it exists beyond time. It operates, you know, in a non-linear space. So it experiences the present or the past, the present and the future happening now. And that can work both towards us and against us. And how it can work against us is if we've been through highly stressful situations and we've experienced trauma and we haven't had a, a chance to process that, you know, that energy and that those emotions and energy have become frozen and stuck in the body, then that part of our brain can loop those past experiences into the present moment and we can be re-triggered, we can be traumatized, we can just have those overlays of experiencing that in the present moment and we can feel stressed, we can have a dysregulated nervous system, we can feel out of, out of control, we can feel anxious, we can feel like we're in that victimhood consciousness where life isn't working for us. Now, where it gets really interesting is where it can work for us because in a breathwork session, we can go back, we can revisit the past, we can stimulate the limbic system, we can bring up unexpressed emotions and memories from the past that haven't been processed, and through that, we can process them, we can let them go, so that past event no longer affects us in the same way. Now, when we're talking about like mental rehearsal and we're talking about becoming creators, we can stimulate the limbic system to condition our mind and body to the future that we want to create. And we do this through visualizing it, through seeing it, through, through planting the seed that it's possible. Now, when we do this repetitively and we do it with intention and there's an elevated emotion within it, we are conditioning our mind and body to the future that we most want to create. And then when we go out and we take aligned action, you know, that's when we start to really see our life change. So this is how we can utilize breath work as well as, you know, tapping into different parts of the brain and the subconscious mind and the emotional body to really work on healing or work on creating or work on deeper connection with ourselves and understanding that, you know, we hold the keys, we have the answers within us, and so many of us have been giving our power away for so long that we don't even realize we've, we don't even realize that we've been doing it. And a part of awakened breath work is to realize that when you give yourself permission to go inwards, when you give yourself permission to face off with unexpressed emotions and pain and things that you've been through that have hurt you, you process that, you let it go, and you're making more room for all of the things that you're ultimately calling in and the things that you truly want. You're making room for those things. You're moving out of survival. You're taking control of your physiology. You're stepping into being a creator. So this is where it's a really powerful thing, you know, and we each have the power within us to create the reality we want, but it's just realizing that and taking radical responsibility for it and then showing up and aligning our, our habits and our beliefs with that reality. So beautiful, man. And I mean, I remember first coming out to LA, I don't know, seven years ago, and the uh, awakened breathwork class that you and Hella did was one of my first long holotropic kind of breathwork sessions. Mm -hmm. And so powerful, man. So <laughs> activating. Every time I've done it with you guys since and on my own has been so profound. Um, I feel like what you guys are doing is really just like allowing, creating spaces, both virtually and physically, for mm -hmm. people's channels to open yeah. and to allow the breath to be a tool to. Um, reconcile things that we're not even aware of, like you said, that are stored in the limbic system that are keeping us stuck in unconscious ways in survival mode. Mm -hmm. And then once you start to move through some of that, then you become lighter. And then you actually can use it as a tool, like you're saying, to activate and bring forth a vision that you want to. Mm -hmm. And your level of what you want changes because mm -hmm. what becomes available to you changes also. Yeah. 
what you what we think we want often is a byproduct of old stories and somebody else's narrative that have been planted in us subconsciously. Yeah. And when you start to become a clear vessel, then you become available to what your soul actually wants to come through you, what life, what nature wants, mm. that intelligent force wants to push through you. Yeah. And so how important do you feel like it is to um, go through this process and then you become aware of what you actually want? Mm. And then you can start to, and we'll go through different ways to bring it forth and bring that in, you know, and start to remember the future that we want. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I think it starts by realizing what's not working. You know, we all get to that point in our lives where we're looping in old behaviors that don't serve us. And they might have served us at a certain time. Like, you know, I touched on emotional eating. And when I was a kid, that served me at a point in time with the awareness I had because it was a way where I could ground myself, where I could experience feeling safe and it, it was nurturing, you know. But as I grow into an adult, like, emotional eating that's just not something that serves me it doesn't align with the person that i want to be so it's like really looking at your behaviors fundamentally on what is working and what's not working and having being really honest with yourself about that because with awareness comes choice so if you know what's not working for you then you can have the choice to make a change and that change is going to be you stepping into challenging your old programming, challenging your more primal parts of self that want to keep you safe. Usually that means that we've been stuck looping in, you know, the comfort zone. And we're going to have to challenge that from a place of love. We're going to have to allow ourselves to move beyond the comfort zone to start new habits that align with the future that we want to create. But I think that place for most people, it starts by realizing that it's not working, whether that's a relationship, a job, a circumstance, whatever it might be. They realize that they're not happy anymore, that they might be frustrated. Things aren't going the way they want to. And they've been living on autopilot. You know, they've been making choices based on their conditioned programming. And I think for most people, they live in autopilot, not really questioning themselves or what's going on or the bigger picture, or they don't believe that it's possible for them to create their wildest dreams into reality. They don't believe in themselves. And we look for, you know, external validation and we look for other people to believe in us first, a lot of the time before we believe in ourselves. And many people are looking for the same people that don't even believe in their own dreams they're wanting those people to believe in their dreams. But how can people believe in your dreams or have your own back when they're not even willing to have their own back or believe in their own dreams? So it's up to you to really take ownership of what you want and to plant the seed of what's possible. And you do that through a daily practice, through changing your beliefs, through identifying you know, limiting beliefs or what's not working for you. And from there, then you get to do the work. you know, And that the work... It can be arduous, it can be exhausting, it can be, you know, feeling like it's never ending, but it can also be extremely rewarding, light, joyful, motivating, and deeply empowering. So I feel it's all about just moving through any fears that you have and just getting started one day at a time and showing up and giving your best in every moment of what you have. There is there's so much that we opened up here. When you spoke to like whatever our addictions are, whether it's sex, drugs, emotional eating, really, first of all, they're it's coming from us trying to alleviate the tension that we have of mm. self. Yeah. And for example, emotional eating, it gives us a crisis that's more manageable mm. than the one that we're currently going through internally. Yeah, it's and, a way of feeling in control. Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally that. And then as you start to go through this process and utilize meditation, movement, breath, sound, touch, whatever can help us kind of alchemize um, the unconscious compulsive parts of ourselves, mm-hmm. we become a creator and step into that consciousness where we can actually bring forth what we want. But going through this process, like you kind of spoke to and the energy of it is oftentimes it'll feel, it will be a death of yeah. who you thought you were. Mm. And that can be scary as hell, especially if you don't have people around you in a sangha or community to support you on, on that process. Mm. Thankfully, we have these virtual spaces where you can you know, be tapped into and that can be supported for you. Mm. Um, but it is something that uh, you can embrace the death of who you're not to step into more of who you are. And I think yeah. that's just a really important thing to touch here because yeah. it's a reality. It is a reality. You know, in order to create the future that we most desire, we have to let go of the past and who we once were and the habits that we once had that led to the point that we are here and now, you know, 
but it's just looking at that, you know, does that align with the future that you want to create? And if it doesn't align, then you get to take radical responsibility and start to shift those behaviors and those habits to align them, you know, with the future that you do want to create. And a part of that is letting go potentially of an old identity, an old way of being that once served you, that, that no longer serves you. But as you step bravely and courageously forward into challenging, you know, that part of you and just moving outside the comfort zone and just giving yourself permission to face off with any fears that arise because they will arise, you know, then you step into that place of being a creator. And I want to really ground this down for people. When you're facing off with fears or a more primitive part of you, that has kept you safe for your entire life, say you've gone through childhood trauma and you experienced feeling extremely unsafe and ungrounded and it was too much, too fast, too soon for you, that experience that you had as a child, it's going to be really important that you go at a pace that feels good for you and there's going to be a part of really listening to yourself, your intuition, your body, your mind and not adopting anyone else's um, strategies that aren't in alignment with where you want to go in, in, in that time. So again, if it feels too much, too fast, too soon for you, then you might find yourself overwhelmed. You might find yourself repeating, you know, being re-traumatized or re-triggered or just feeling like really out of control. And when we feel out of control, it's important to remember that we can shift that and we can move beyond the stress response. We can take control of our physiology with our breath. We can use different breath work techniques to really ground ourselves and to move out of that stress response and move into, you know, more activating the parasympathetic nervous system and rest and digest and taking our power back. Because with that ego death, for me, on a personal experience, has come a lot of anxiety, a lot of clutching, not wanting to let go panic attacks, many dark nights of the soul, and that shit is real. And when you go through those experiences, it can be extremely overwhelming. But to realize that you have the power to shift your state with your breath is a game changer in those moments when you need it and you're out at sea drowning. It's like someone's throwing you a life jacket and you can put that life jacket on and you can float. And that's what your breath does for you in those moments. It grounds you, it supports you, it enables you to be here in this present moment. Because when we experience trauma, a lot of the time, it's like we're fractured off in a different timeline. And if we haven't been able to process that trauma, we can go back to that timeline and it can feel like we're reliving it. We're really there in the moment. And that stress and cortisol and all those different neurochemicals that are released in that body and our released in our body, it, it takes us to that moment. And that can be really scary for a lot of people. So doing it in a titrated way where you're slowing down, you're listening to your body, you're listening to what is right for you is a way that you can start to take your healing into your own hands. And to do that, you might not be able to use a strategy like David Goggins, where you just push forward in the masculine. That may work for you, or it may be too much, too fast, too soon. You might have to slow down. You might have to really allow yourself to take time of going inwards and reflecting and journaling and not pushing past the resistance as it comes up, but being in the res res but being in the resistance, being curious, being open. Some days having a mindset like David Goggins really fucking serves me, and it enables me to like you know move past any of my own limitations. And other times I realize that is not the strategy. That is not the thing that I need right now. I need to actually slow down. I need to meet my inner child with love, with reverence, with care, and I actually need to love on that part of me and self parent that part of me from a place of being really nurturing and listening really deeply to what that part of me wants. And in doing that, you know, we get I get to shift that um, that anxiety, that fear, that sense of feeling so out of control and overwhelmed. And every time I meet that part of me that, you know, my inner child or that younger part of me with that love, with that reverence, with that nurturing, I'm giving myself that part, you know, something that it never had, was never able to receive. And in doing that, I am growing stronger. And, you know, that's a really powerful thing to give yourself permission to do. Mm. So good, man. We're blessed if we can find ourselves with the right amount of suffering in life. It's necessary to go through these challenges. And yeah. 
the the more that you go through them, the more that you realize that you are your own healer. You have the capacity to be held by life. Nature is so intelligent in ways mm -hmm. our mind can never comprehend. And it's, of course, going to give us all the tools we need to in this life to carry us through. The breath being a tool we always have had and always will have as long as we're here in this body with us mm -hmm. that allows us to alchemize those denser energies and emotions and things we're holding on to to let it go. Mm -hmm. And then what becomes available to us is so much and mm -hmm. it might be different for everybody depending upon what you've been holding on to it's like that saying if you know squeeze an orange orange juice will come out if you squeeze a human whatever they're holding on to will come out and allowing us to uh, move through what needs to come out of us and through us to then see what um, life's uh, plan and you know the universe can orchestrate for us in a higher intelligence mm. And then what it needs is patience. Like we, de we, we decide what seed we want to plant in our life. What do mm. we truly want from the space where anything's possible? Mm. Because previously we were unconsciously under the impression that only certain things were possible mm. because we think they're probable. And now we're coming to the space, the heart space where possibility, not just the mind space, which is probability. Mm. And then, uh, life is one big candy shop in which you can choose what you mm. want to taste and, and how sweet you want it to be. I and love that place. Yeah, it's the great place because yeah. you're, uh, you get to place your order with the universe of what mm. you want. Yeah. But first you need to get clear on what you do want. And mm. the, the tragedy most people operate within this life is they don't get clear on what they truly want from mm. that space of possibility. Yeah. And then once you decide what that seed is, right, then you can plant it. And then it's just a process of patience. Mm. If you have a seed and you water it and you put it in the right environment and you just wait long enough and you take a line action consistently over a sustained period of time, mm. it will blossom. It has no choice. That's just how nature works. Mm. But oftentimes we're either not patient, you know, we're impatient trying to dig up the seed and see how far it's going and comparing our seed growth to somebody else's seed growth and, and judging it and shaming that process. Yeah. Um, or we've planted a seed that isn't doesn't actually mean something to us. Yeah. And so I just would love to continue down this path of first getting clear on how important it is to decide what that seed is we want to play a place in the in the soil of our life. Mm. And then how important it is to take aligned action over a period of time because it does take time mm. for that to grow. We need to be patient and have that consistent action be a reality for us. Yeah, the thing that I see like time and time again with people is the worthiness piece. A lot of people don't give themselves permission to dream big. They don't give themselves permission to really know that it is possible for them to create whatever they want to create. I feel like a lot of the time when we're having that kind of ego death or we're going through experiencing the loss of the old self or the old life or want or who we once were, and we're stepping into becoming the new version of ourselves, it can be so painful that we end up not trusting life. We feel that life doesn't have our own back. And we, not only do we not trust ourselves, we don't trust life, the universe, God. You know, we have evidence of how we've been let down, how we've been betrayed, how we've been hurt in the past. And a part of moving through all of that is surrendering to it is surrendering to it, giving yourself permission to feel everything that comes with all of those past hurts. And as we give ourselves permission to process it and feel it and move into a state of being connected to ourselves, being connected to the universe, being connected to God, then we can step into surrendering and knowing that there is a plan. There is a higher plan at play. And with that higher plan, there's an opportunity for us to dream big and to step into being a creator of what we most desire. And that is about giving ourselves permission to know that it is possible and to also connect to why we want it. Like, why does it matter to us? Because that why is going to help us so much in the times we feel low, we feel disconnected, or we don't feel motivated. If we have that strong enough why, it's going to propel us forward on those days. And we're going to be able to, you know, move into a state of just taking aligned action to make it a reality, even when resistance comes up, because resistance will come up. Resistance is connected to the old self. It's the, the old ways of being. It's the old timeline. And in order to move through that resistance, we just have to show up. We have to challenge it. We have to surrender to the higher plan. But we also have to do our part because there's so many times in life where we can focus on all the things that aren't working 
And in many of those things that are outside our control, we, back, we can become consumed by. But when we put our attention and focus on the things that we can control while acknowledging what isn't working and surrendering it over to a higher power, asking for help and showing up and doing our part, that's when we start to move into being in the driver's seat of life and being into co-creating with life, with the universe, with God. And from that place, we will open doors, synchronicities, divine flow, opportunities will come where once a door was closed, a door will open. And then it's all about saying yes and walking through that door. Mm. The clarity on the on the why piece is really important, right? Mm. Because a lot of times we want things that we think we want based off of somebody else's narrative. And it doesn't really have momentum. It doesn't have weight to it. Mm. But when we choose a seed that we want to plant in life and we get clear on why we actually want it, a lot of people say they want money or or fame or a certain career, but we don't really know why. Why does it actually have any meaning for you? Mm. And, and once you start to uncover that and discover that, then the universe orchestrates in a way so grander than us. Like mm. I'm sure when you find alignment in your life, for me and I know for you, it it's like opportunities just throw themselves at you from the abyss. They mm. just come into your sight of like this big opportunity to work with this person or this big client or um, just this new way of expanded of being. Like mm. so much becomes available to you when you are who you are. Yeah. And and then that in that, in that space when you are who you are, you get what you need mm. and what you want. And when you discover why you want it, it's just like you become a co-creator with the universe. Yeah. And I've experienced times where I've got the opportunities and I didn't feel worthy to receive them. Yeah. So I would self-sabotage or I would just blatantly say I'm not ready or I'd hold myself back because I didn't feel worthy of stepping into that opportunity in that moment. And that's a very real thing for a lot of people, you know, where they just don't feel good enough. They don't feel they have what it takes. So a part of that is reminding yourself on the daily that you are good enough, that you do have what it takes, that this is your time to go after it and make it real. And every day is an opportunity to show up as the version of yourself that you came here to be and not let the old version of you stop you. You know, And sometimes that can be in a conflict, an inner conflict that we go through on a daily basis, You know, through negative self-talk or the parts of us that just aren't in alignment with the future that we actually want. And it's our job as co-creators to almost discipline or self-parent those parts of ourselves that aren't in alignment with the future that we want and to challenge those parts from a place of unconditional love because from there we can get to work and not allow those parts to stop us. Yeah. And the more that you see firsthand that you are a creator and you have the power to manifest, like mm -hmm. really, actually, then you see how the power of belief in yourself, in your vision, in your dream becomes fuel on the fire mm. of, of bringing it forth and how we can harness that energy to expedite the process. And once you hit that stride, it's magical how mm. fast things can come into reality for you within yeah. what you thought could be done in three years, you all of a sudden hit an exponential quantum leap and it happens in three months. Facts. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. When I look back at our journey, uh, Haller and I with Awaken Breathwork over the last three years, so oftentimes in the moment, I can feel like I'm not where I want to be. Like I'm not doing enough. I'm not creating enough impact. Impact is one of my highest values. And in the moment when I reflect and I look at the three years, the past three years that we've been through, then I'm like, okay, I actually am making impact and I am showing up and I am doing what I said, you know that I want to do. And I have to remind myself of that, you know, quite often because so, so often it can be so easy to just get lost in being so hard on myself or focused on where I want to go. And it's like looking up at a giant mountain and realize like I'm only at the bottom or a quarter of the way up and realizing I have so far to go. But that process is good because it allows me to be one realistic with how big my dreams are and what it's going to take to get there and i get to take away any self-judgment or any comparison to other people and just use it as a motivator to really activate myself to know that like we're about to climb that mountain baby we have got this and this is my time to go and make this a reality and i feel like i'm forging a path that there's not really a map for, and I'm creating a map along with Hella 
on a daily basis and we self-reflect and we do the work and we tune into our why and and what it's about for us and yeah to be honest there's days where we're putting in so much energy and so much work and we're taking so much action that we can lose the play and then i have to remind you know myself and hella reminds me too that we've got to play you know connecting to the play because it's the play that allows us to fill up our own cups it's the play that allows us to feel like this isn't work this is play and we get to do it from the elevated state of joy and we get to bring our inner child along for the journey and, and a child gets to play you know rather than like we have to work every day is about mission and being focused and i can definitely get lost in that so when i remind myself like to integrate the play into the work you know, that's so important because every day I'm dealing with people's traumas. I'm dealing with really heavy things that people are navigating and that can be overwhelming, you know, but I realize in the moment that it's not my responsibility to change anything that's happened. And in fact, I'm not the source of my client's healing you know, and that's important to remember that the client is their own healer and we're just holding them accountable to doing the work and to showing up. And along that process, I have to remind myself of that too, you know, and hold myself in that space of not only what's possible, dream bigger, but remind myself of how far I've actually come because over the last three years, you know, we've transformed our lives completely. We've transformed our relationship with ourselves, we've transformed our relationship with money, we've transformed our relationship with business, we've transformed our relationship with our inner circle and our family, and that doesn't stop. So beautifully said, man. And to me, like, once you start taking these steps, you'll just find yourself in places and circumstances that just are baffling. Like, I, we've both been in multiple scenarios where it's like, bring medicine into the belly of the beast here in LA working mm. with a lot of entertainers and you know it's it's so beautiful that we are able to do this work and mm. how everyone really does need this and this work needs to be available for everyone and when you find that alignment like it's when you enjoy what you do it's so much more easy to have play in it you know and so um it's it's important to have that balance of like being mission focused and having the vision you want to bring forth and actively taking steps and see how it's incredibly important, but not to take the journey too seriously, yeah, you know, because it's like important. it's where we have this vision of where we want to go. So it's great. And if we're just so tunnel vision on that, we miss the larger, you know, context that we're yeah. that we're existing within. Yeah. Uh, and that can be a trap of our own making as well. Yeah. For people that want to embody this and bring this down into their lives how important do you feel like it is to mentally rehearse the vision that you want to bring forth in your life and to continually have that vision um, and what have been some tools and practices that allow you to do it in terms of you know for me just like writing it down actually and like using using my vision and my internal sight to see what i want to and to feel it um, but how do you allow people um, and support individuals to embody the frequency and the feeling of what they want to bring forth and and make it happen mental rehearsal is something that i practice every single day and i do it along with awakened breath work and a meditation practice so i do my awaken daily practice first which is our five minute sig signature breath work practice anyone can learn it online for free and then i go into a meditation the breath work enables me to go deeper in my meditation so from the meditation, I'm taking myself into emptying out my mind, um, rearranging, you know, any subconscious thoughts or any conversations that I've had or things that I've been through. I'm kind of filtering all of that out and I'm getting into a space of just dropping into a, uh, being like a drop in an ocean, moving into that emptiness, aligning myself with like the universal flow of the cosmos, I guess. It's just being that empty state of awareness. Once I enter into that empty state of awareness, I'm then starting to almost put into the field a deposit of what really lights me up, of what really inspires me, of what really feels like a full body fuck yes. So I'm moving into that elevated state. I'm planting in that um, blueprint of what I actually want to create. And I'm doing that through seeing, I'm doing that through feeling, I'm doing that through visualization, I'm doing that through mentally rehearsing every single part of that journey and how I want to create it, what's going to happen within that journey. And I'm playing it out like a mind movie within my mind and I'm really seeing it 
as the witness. And as that witness, I'm celebrating it and I'm in that elevated state and I've almost got like a childlike joy around it. And I'm just like, this is the most exciting thing that I possibly want to do. And I'm really connected into my why in that space. And that's how I work when I'm manifesting any type of client. One, if I'm working on manifesting a client, someone who would be my ideal client, someone I know that I can make a difference in their life, it's not about what I can get, it's always about what I can give. So from that place of what I can give, there is my why. Why do I want to work with this person? What um, impact can I have in their life? Because one of my you know highest values is impact. So I'm connecting into that. I'm getting really clear on why I want to enter into this person's life. And then from there, I'm putting that deposit into the field and seeing it as done. And that's something that I practice every single day. And that's one of the reasons why I've been able to open doors and work with the type of clientele that I have, because I know my why, I'm seeing it, I'm feeling it, I'm connecting to it, it's already done, I'm mentally rehearsing it. So when the time comes, when I actually get that opportunity and I knock on their door and they open up the door, you know, and they greet me, I know exactly why I'm there. I know exactly what we're doing. And I go straight into it. And I'm able to get them the results because I've been practicing it for a long time before that event has actually manifested. Yeah. That level of self mastery first allows you to step into spaces and allow that to be activated in others. You become a catalyst for Mm -hmm. other people's self mastery and growth. And that's so it's so beautiful. It's like the fruit of you going through all the tough shit that you've gone through in your life to work through it, to alchemize it, to discover who you are beneath all the layers of of the illusions that you've picked up. Mm. And from that place, be able to step in spaces as uh, a vibratory being that just holding a frequency, you're holding a pillar of what's possible. Mm. And that is so refreshing. And it's so needed during, you know, this, on this time of the planet where a lot of people it's like the equal measure of on both sides of the coin, a lot of dark and a lot of light is becoming mm-hmm. available right now. Yeah. And the more that we can develop and take responsibility like, we to, like we've been speaking to, claiming the vision for who we want to be in the world mm-hmm. and then seeing that reflection in life, mm-hmm. then we step into spaces and um, that alignment just feels true, feels so good and it feels exciting. Yeah, it feels so exciting because we're really playing the game of life. We're in the driver's seat. No longer are we running on autopilot. We've stepped into being a co-creator, you know, with life, the universe, with God. And it gets to be fun. It gets to be enjoyable. It, you know that if you can manifest your wildest dreams into reality, and yes, it's going to take time and, you know, investing money, investing, educating yourself and taking aligned action on the daily and mentally rehearsing it and preparing for it. So when the moment comes, when you get that opportunity, you're actually ready for it. You are prepared. If you, you know, you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. You're just, you are ready when the opportunity comes. Then it gets to be fun. You're not overwhelmed. You know that you're exactly where you're meant to be, that you are in right relationship with yourself. You're in right relationship with life, the universe, God. God has opened that opportunity for you. You've stepped through and then it's like, it's playtime, baby. We get to do this. And it's so fucking fun. Like some of the things that, you know, I've manifested when they've come into fruition, when I'm actually there in the moment, I'm just like, holy shit, like we're really doing this. Like I've been mentally rehearsing this for so long Mm. and now the moment has arrived and I'm here and there's so much joy, there's so much life force, there's so much fuel and energy that comes with that. And that's what we get to do. And that gets to be our work. That gets to be how we serve. That gets to be how we make money. That's how we, you know, get to make change and create impact from that place of just being so connected to, you know, having fun doing it. Mm. And and like I said, to get into that place, into that elevated state, it takes work. There's so many times now that I have to remind myself off that and take myself out of that hyper-masculine way of working and pushing forward and getting things done and ticking things off the list of things to do on a daily basis, which is a part of being an entrepreneur and owning your own business. You have to get really good at that. But there's also time to slow down, to go inward, to connect to your inner guidance, to take action on your inner guidance. And that's just as equally, you know, important as an entrepreneur or someone running their own business in a service of, you know, creating impact in this world. Yeah. Yeah. It's just to like honor the season of life that we're in. The more that you tap into your own intuition and grow your own awareness, you see the 
um, the pace at which like what is going to most serve you in life. And a lot mm. of times that might be really slowing down for years on end. Maybe mm. sometimes it's ramping up and just like the, like a flower bush or a rose bush, there's going to be some flowers that are wilting, some flowers that are blooming, some flowers that are growing, mm. lots of thorns. Like everyone's journey is completely different. You just got to honor what's actually true and mm. real for you. And yeah. I love how we spoke to earlier of like, yes, envisioning with our mind and the power that we have to remember our future in a way where we can claim the timeline and to really own it. Mm. And also we don't get just a match to, we don't get in life what we want. We get a, we get a reflection of who we are. And so it's important to discover how we can raise our own vibrancy and that's mm. mental, but also physical and spiritual mm. to have our spiritual hygiene, to have, to Sound be funny. very clear about our environment and who we're allowing in whatever stimulus we're taking in within our five senses. Yeah. Then also the food and the nourishment we're putting in our body, like all of that contributes to how vibrant we are as an as a being. Mm. And from that place, we become, become a match to more vibrant and abundant things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it's not just the food that we're digesting. Obviously, we all know that we're digesting so much information on a daily basis. And like you said, becoming more aware of the type of information that you're digesting on a daily basis that doesn't serve you, including the people that you surround yourself with, the environment that you put yourself in. If it's not serving you, then it's up to you as a co-creator to take yourself out of that environment or to limit those time limit your time with those people that aren't fueling you, that aren't, you know, allowing you to be the greatest version of yourself. And we all have people in our lives, whether that's friends and family members, that we can be around that, you know, drain our energy, that suck our own life force. But what about the ways that we do that to ourselves on a daily basis, that we drain our own energy, our own life force and vitality with the way that we're thinking, the way that we're perceiving ourselves through our daily thoughts and awareness of not feeling good enough or not feeling enough or feeling like we're not where we should be. You know, that's all energy leaking out, which is draining our vital life force. So becoming aware of that is really important as a co-creator, as someone who's taking radical responsibility for your life, you know, looking at all the ways that you are leaking energy that, that are not in alignment with the future that you want, that aren't in alignment with the person that you want to be, you know, looking at that and breaking it down. Because when you start surrounding yourself with people that actually inspire you and lift you up and elevate you, and they become a source of joy and motivation for you, and you're actually being inspired by the people that you surround yourself with, that's a whole different level of existing and living when you're around, you know, people that you might feel a more energetic vampires in nature and just draining you, you know, that's a, a different experience altogether. So when we can move into, you know, surrounding ourselves with people who light us up, who believe in us, who cheer us on, who want to see us win, man, that is life-changing. And for me, that's been a big journey. I didn't have that, you know, growing up. I grew up in a, quite a negative environment, not in terms of my home life. Like my mum was so supportive, you know, she would always honor anything that I'd want to do. Uh, she told me that I could do it. She had her own struggles and her own traumas and same with dad and dad decided to opt out and leave this planet early. But there was always a lot of support and there was always a lot of love. But within my outer environment growing up, there was a lot of negativity and I got lost within that negativity for a long time. And it took me stepping into taking radical responsibility of my life to withdraw myself from those situations, those people and those circumstances that were leading me down a certain timeline. And, you know, we become the thoughts that we think. We become, you know, the people that we surround ourselves with. We become what we're digesting on a daily basis. So taking responsibility for that is something that you will never, ever regret. And that can be a difficult journey because it means that you're going to have to honor yourself and put yourself first. And for a lot of people, we've been, you know, putting other people's needs and desires before us. And to step into really claiming what you want and knowing that you're worthy of that as a journey and it's not going to happen overnight, but it happens moment by moment when you have the awareness to look at what's not working and what's not in alignment. Yeah. It's just like when the oxygen masks come on in an airplane, you got to put yours on first and um, mm -hmm. we can be so externally Focus and trying to create the life we want or support other people. But if we're not taking care of our own needs, we're not mm -hmm. going to be able to be efficient and effective healers for the planet or, you know, stewards for what we want to bring forth. So it's so important to first honor what is needed for self yeah. and to demystify what 
you just have to look at what conditions are necessary for whatever you want to achieve, what conditions are necessary for that to arise mm. and to take it out of this place of this ethereal spiritual mysticism of the unknown. Mm. And uh, if you want a fruit or a, a certain tree to grow, you just need to provide it what it needs. What are the right conditions for that to, to grow and blossom currently, you know, yeah. properly. And so if you don't know what the conditions are for whatever you're trying to blossom in your life, mm. discover what that is. Yeah, and then and, you go from there. Yeah, and when you're stressed out and you find yourself overwhelmed, then knowing that you create a pattern interference by switching things up, by challenging yourself, maybe with a breath work technique or yeah. meditation or journaling, just taking that time out where you're starting to understand yourself and you're starting to understand your nervous system and your stress response. Because when you know that you can change your physiology and you realize that you are in a stress response, whether that be fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And fawn is associated with, you know, self-abandonment. It's, you know, putting other people before you to the detriment of yourself, which many people fall into that category, especially if you're an empath or, you know, you're working in, you know, supporting other people and supporting roles. You can often, you know, give your energy to others to the point where it's, you know, draining you of your own vital life force and you're not taking care of yourself. So understanding your stress response is key because once you understand that you are in a stress response and you have the power to take yourself out of a stress response, then you can move out of survival and into being a creator because many of us are either living in a stress response and survival or we're living as a creator. They don't go both hand in hand, you know. You have to be able to move out of that stress response first and foremost and you have to know that you are in a stress response because many of us just don't we don't we're not we don't have the awareness we might have the awareness that we feel triggered that we feel you know our patience is short we're more reactive or whatever the case might be but we're not we haven't yet identified that we are in a stress response we haven't identified that we're dysregulated we're not grounded we're not centered our energy is outpouring to other people and circumstances and places and we don't feel whole within so that is key for sure yeah, we're we're so good at bullshitting ourselves, you yeah. know. Like, if we don't brush our teeth for five or six days at a time, everyone else around us will know, but it's going to become normal to us. We're not going to even know notice. So it's like, oftentimes we're just not aware of what our stress responses are. We're just living in this uh, constipated reality that we've created for ourselves, and yeah. we're unaware of it. And that's why it's so needed, like breath work and these different tools that we've been speaking to, to allow you to create distance from you and your habitual compulsive thought and emotion, because yeah. that is what's on autopilot right now. And yeah. for you to break from that, you need to take a, a deviation from what you've currently, what you've been doing to create that, to continue to have momentum in your life. So, mm. Yeah, that's key. Yeah, and so often you see it everywhere, you know, people are in, living in a stress response. They're so reactive. They don't even realize that they're in a stress response. They just believe that they're reacting to life circumstances. But the trigger is not always, you know, the trigger of why that person is reacting the way they are. It might be the initial trigger, but beyond that, beneath that, there is a core wound that's wanting to come up, to be felt, to be processed, to be healed. You know, there's unexpressed emotion and energy behind that. And when people can start to do the work to look at the timeline, trace things back, okay, I'm in a stress response. Why am I feeling like this? Okay, there's this initial trigger. Is this initial trigger, does it have a deep, deeper core wound of what's re what's really going on for me? And being self-reflective, that's doing inner work, you know, and that is so powerful because that's you taking radical responsibility for the way you show up in every moment and not, you know, just snapping on people or, you know, not just being that person that's out in the world and just reacting so harshly and negatively to what's going on because most people are projecting their own pain, their own insecurities, their own fears, their own unprocessed emotions onto other people. And the moment you realize that you don't have to take things personally, it's not a reflection of you you might have triggered that person with something that you've said or a certain way of being or the way you look, but ultimately there's work to do for that person. Sure, you get to show up and take responsibility for your actions, for your part in that, if it's aligned to do so. But, you know, there's a deeper, there's a deeper story. There's a deeper wound playing out for most people, but they just don't realize that in the moment. They get lost in that stress response. They get uh, lost in that initial reaction to the surface layer of what's going on. 
Yeah, it's like the more we relinquish that need, that internal need to be right and justify our yeah. own triggers yeah. and start to take ownership, the more that we actually go on that path of integration, then we see it more clearly in others and it allows us to be more empathetic and have compassion for people mm -hmm. that are suffering because of their own making. And it's like they're unaware of the traps that they've created for themselves and not to say that I'm going to invite everybody no matter their wounding over for Christmas but you can be discerning who you want to have in your environment mm. but to be compassionate that um, if somebody's projecting hate shame guilt towards you it's because that's literally their experience of life they are projecting that because they are triggered that's something unresolved within their life yeah. I'm all for constructive criticism I'm all for Same. feedback that is like I welcome that. Mm -hmm. And if it's coming from a place of pointing the finger and not with the energy of love, then mm -hmm. it's just something that I don't personally resonate with and is not really an effective motivator. You can't force somebody to change in life. You can invite them into making their own change and that is, that's a decision they have to make. So anything you want to speak to, because I know somebody that's heavily tattooed, somebody that's working in, in these big spaces that gets projections from people online as you step as a creator, mm -hmm. you experience that, you know? Yeah, I understand that because you know, I've done this to myself. I'm so heavily tattooed, you know, I've tattooed most of my body, but that has been my choice and that's been a part of my path. And for a long time, my tattoos were my armor. There was something that, you know, protected me because I didn't feel safe. So it's like putting on a mask to make myself feel safe and also almost to be like, get back. You know, there's some danger here. Like you don't come too close because for a long time, I realized that I was pushing love away because I didn't feel so worthy of receiving love. And it goes back to my childhood traumas around, you know, just not feeling safe through different experiences that I had. And then also my dad passing, I felt abandoned through that. And he was obviously my primary masculine role model and he was heavily tattooed and same with my uncles. So I represented that with safety. You know, tattoos for me were about safety. It was, it was a positive thing in my life. And for many people that might sound abstract because they might, you know, represent tattoos as, you know, being something different. But for me, it was always safety. Like I remember growing up and my, after my dad passed, my uncle would take me on the back of his Harley and would go to like Hells Angels rallies and would camp out. And I'd be in these really hyper masculine environments with all kinds of wild things going on. But as a kid, it was like so innocent for me and I felt so comfortable in around that environment, even with all the toxicity and drama and negativity that was going on in that space. I just didn't register that as that. I registered it as play and as fun. So growing up, becoming so heavily tattooed for me first, or getting so heavily tattooed first was like, you know, it was a protection mechanism and then it was a part of me expressing myself. I realized that I didn't ever want to work for anyone. I didn't want to, you know, be in a nine to five job. I wanted to create something that had never been created within my family dynamic or the environment that I was in. And I didn't know how to do that, but it was almost like me marking myself to say, you know, now you've limited all your options and now it's time to step into being an entrepreneur and taking radical responsibility taking radical responsibility for your life. So I understand the the judgment that comes with it because you know judgment is just part of the human condition and I do my best to not take it personally at all and I understand it, you know why people would judge me and, I, and I'm cool with it 100% like it doesn't affect me. But what I am here to empower people on I think mostly is the ways that they judge themselves because we can have such a harsh inner critic within ourselves that you know the things we tell us the things we tell ourselves on the daily um, that just hurt us or make us feel that it's not possible to achieve our dreams or to do the things that we want and we can battle with that inner critic or that part of us that's just looping and you know not showing up and taking consistent action is key because Yes, you will be judged when you step into the path of, you know, showing up, of being seen, of shining your light, of taking inspired and aligned action and taking people along for the journey. That's just a part of it. People will try and shut you down. People tr will project their own fears, limitations and negativity onto you. That's fine because that's their work. It's not yours. But your work is to look at your own judgments of how you perceive yourself, the ways that you might be lowering your vibe and disempowering yourself, and then to take radical responsibility for that and to move beyond that inner critic, knowing that that inner critic doesn't have to 
control the way that you perceive yourself. It might be there running in the background, but it doesn't have to take, you know, the forefront of your awareness that you can be the the observer, the witness to that, and that you can choose something different. So if you notice that you're judging yourself or you're lowering yourself or you're having a really judgmental day, and yes, that judgmental that judgmental day might be internally on yourself and then it might be also projecting onto other people, just looking at that, just realizing that's where you're at in that moment, then creating that pattern interference is key because from there you can start to shift that way of thinking and by shifting your way of thinking, and showing up in a different way and perceiving yourself in a more expanded, light, joyful way, then that enables you to show up differently for yourself and the people around you. And from there, you're going to, you know, choose different habits and different ways of being that are going to align with what you actually want. So I think overall, it's really that awareness, say, eh, and taking away that judgment of self because so many people are just stuck in that loop of habitually just judging themselves on a daily basis. Yeah, to, to grow our awareness to see why we've created the coping mechanisms and behavioral compensations that we've created mm. and to see the purpose that served and to actually thank it for keeping us safe internally yeah. in our childhood and in our yeah. youth where we needed to create, um, we either had to forsake our authenticity or that attachment to a loving parent, you know, and it's mm. like, we're always going to choose the option that keeps us safe as we're young. And so mm. we think that we think that part of ourselves yeah. and then we can integrate it and realize that it's no longer serving us. Hell yeah. It's like, what's up, buddy? I see you. Yeah. I got you. I love you, but no longer will you run the show. Yeah. It's just like, it just wants to be seen. Yeah. It just wants to be loved on. Yeah. And then from that place of like loving on that part of ourselves that, you know, maybe felt disempowered or didn't feel good enough or whatever the, the story is that we told ourselves in the moment because often it's not what happens to us. Well, yes, that's true. It's what happens to us, but there's the meaning that we make. There's a story that we tell ourselves. So, you know, looking at those stories and being able to, you know, bring loving, our loving, compassionate light to those stories yeah. or to those parts of ourselves is major key. You know, it's a major key alert. And then, you know, from there it's like, it's life changes, you know, and yeah. I guess for everyone watching this, I, I want you to know that if you're in that place right now of really judging yourself, if you're looping in behaviors that don't align with the future that you want, just know that you have the power to create a pattern interference, that you have the power within you to create the life that you truly want. You do, but you have to own it. You have to decide that you want it. You have to tap into your why. You have to let the universe know, let life, let God know that this actually means something to you and you want it, like you really want it. And then you have to show up and do the work and go out there and take aligned action to make it a reality. But that is within your control. You have the power to do that. And if there's areas in your life that you currently feel out of control, whether, that's be, whether that be habits or coping mechanisms, things that you do on a daily basis that just you feel are no longer in alignment. You don't want to do those things anymore, but you're struggling. You find yourself looping. That pattern interference is going to be key. And what I mean by that is questioning that habit. Why are you still doing that habit? If it's no longer aligning with the future that you say that you want, you have to question that, you have to look at that, and then you have to create an action plan forward of like a new habit that does align with you know the future that you want. And every day we have an opportunity of what we give our energy, attention, and power to. So know that every day is an opportunity to give your energy, attention, and power to the things that are in alignment with the future that you say you want. And is that going to be challenging? Yes. Is there going to be resistance? Yes. Are you capable of moving through that resistance? Yes. Are you capable of loving on the parts of you that might feel stuck and not want to make that change? You 100% are capable of loving on all parts of yourself and giving yourself what you need on a daily basis. Mm. So powerful, man. I love it. Like the power that we really do have to make change in our life. We do have it. That choice is there. And for a large part of our path, honestly, choice is an illusion because we're just continually, be, we're on that same path that we always have because mm -hmm. it's who we've forsaken ourselves to be. Yeah. And we're 
making choices within the limited the limited bandwidth of possibilities that we've created for ourselves. And mm -hmm. so only till you have the courage and the bravery, which it does take to step out of yourself, to step out of who you've been, to put yourself physically in spaces that are that pattern interrupt mm -hmm. is so necessary, man, because mm -hmm. you can have the insight and that can be powerful. But really moving the energy, going in, there's so many beautiful containers that you know we're both part of that you can go and actually be in the space to immerse yourself in, a, in an experience mm -hmm. that can blast you into no, a non-ordinary state of consciousness, oftentimes with just your own breath mm -hmm. and to, to really move through that. And I know you've been doing it for a while and supporting people through this process, but that felt reality that it's really possible that you can actually make that change is such a liberating one. And I, I think that what you've been speaking to and also just the way in which you've been saying it and the and the, the power that you've been speaking, this whole podcast, I think really is gonna be encouraging for people to see that they can make the change in their life. And if they're not, it's because they want something else more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. And looking at that, looking at your motivations of, you know, your behaviors and the way that you're showing up. And it's okay, you know, because a lot of the time it's it's based in innocent parts of us that want to feel safe. And just looking at that and taking away that judgment is key. You know, one of the things I tell myself on the daily is I liberate myself and give others permission to do the same. I liberate myself and give others permission to do the same. So I liberate myself from the past, from the things that have hurt me. I liberate myself from all behaviors and ways of being and coping mechanisms that don't align with the person that I want to be. I liberate myself from, you know, unexpressed emotions and frozen energy and trauma and things that I've been through. And then I help others to do the same. And that's definitely something that motivates me so much and inspires me so much and is one of my favorite things to do and just for people to realize their inherent innocence is key knowing that you are loved that you are guided that you are supported and that the universe has your motherfucking back you know once you really step into knowing that and living by that life changes radically yeah and then you get to be weaving co-creating with life finding that balance of both our masculine and feminine polarities mm. to be able to yes hustle and achieve the life that we want but then also to align and receive the life that is available to us yeah. and having that balance of both incorporating the play and the vision you know having yeah. the softness and the strength all of that is necessary to find the balance of self-actualization and yeah. so they go hand in hand man both self-realization realizing who we are beneath the stories of what we've accumulated and then actualizing who we are to be in this life. I think we've pointed out a lot of beautiful things for people on this podcast today. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. And if anyone's interested in starting a breathwork practice, then, you know, there's many different types of breathwork practices that all have different benefits, but you can start with a practice called Awaken Daily, which is our five minute signature practice. It's free. You can find it on YouTube. You can find the link on our website, awaken.com. Takes around five minutes. And the whole reason that this is a powerful practice as it starts to shift your focus externally and allows you to go inwards and to connect to your intuition. We call it your inner guidance. And you start to get clear on your life and from that clarity, you get to go out there and take aligned action. So this is a practice of deepening your relationship with yourself, strengthening your connection to your intuition while receiving all of the health benefits that a breathwork practice gives you. Which are so many. Thank you so much, bro. Yeah. The link will be down in the description for those who want to check out. I love absolutely everything that you guys are doing with Awaken. And it's been so powerful. If you are fortunate enough, whoever's listening to this, to be present to one of their longer sessions, um, I highly recommend it. And the uh, the five minute one um, seems like a great place to start. It's a great place to start. Yeah. And if you want to go deeper, then you can find us online. We'll be running online workshops and in-person workshops. And the deeper journeys are absolutely life-changing, but you have to be prepared and you have to want it and you have to give yourself permission to face off with, you know, unexpressed emotions and the things that have hurt you in the past. But it's a beautiful journey of self-empowerment. It's a beautiful self-empowering journey. And just know that we got you. If that's something that you want to take, that that's the journey that aligns with you, then Hala and I have got you. Our team has got you. And um, yeah, you, you will never regret, you know, investing in yourself and doing the work. Powerful, man. I love it. I love you and Hala so much. Just the way that you guys walk through the world. Like I really appreciate being able to be deeply on the spiritual path, but then also super freaking human. 
and to <laughs> to have that balance, you know, and to have that integration. Because oftentimes we see one or the other mm. individuals that are very much so in their human flesh suit and chasing their hedonistic pleasures day in day out, <laughs> or the individuals um, that are super just going inward and they're not creating with that energy, which I think is important for periods of time and periods of life. But mm. that path of integration to know who we are and to then actively create that and share that blessing and offering mm. with the wor- world is, is so beautiful. Mm. So thank, thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me. Let's yeah. get it, y'all. Let's it's get time it. to dream big. Let's go. Love <laughs> it. This podcast has been so nutrient dense. Thank you, brother. Um, everywhere where you can find Lucas will be linked down in the description. I've been coming on this journey on the Know Thyself podcast. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. Helps us kind of reach more people and uh, everything where you can find the Know Thyself Clips channel and everything will be linked down below. I appreciate you dearly. And until next time, be well. Peace.